Can Christians have tattoos? This is a question that I see asked a lot. Overall, the Bible does not provide a clear directive on whether or not Christians should get tattoos, which is why it's such a debated topic. I know some Christians choose to avoid tattoos as a personal conviction or as a way to honor the Old Testament commandment, while some Christians I know do have tattoos and they view it as a matter of personal preference, cultural expression, and even as a way to honor God. Ultimately, the decision to get a tattoo is a personal one that you should make prayerfully and thoughtfully with consideration for one's own convictions and the potential impact on others. Before deciding whether getting a tattoo is biblical or not, there are other considerations we should take into account. Are there other biblical verses against tattoos? Some Christians believe that the mark of the beast mentioned in Revelation 13, 16 to 18 is a kind of tattoo. However, in the following chapter, Revelation 14, 1, it is said that the 144,000 redeemed from the earth have the Father's name written on their foreheads. Therefore, a literal reading could lead us to conclude that the righteous will also have tattoos even on their faces. There are many ways to interpret Revelation, and while it's possible that one day a world order might require people to tattoo the number six, it seems unlikely that this was the meaning John intended. Even if this were true, we could tattoo anything other than 666, and we would be fine. Either way, I would not recommend tattoos of 666 for many reasons. Biblical references and interpretations but what does the Bible say about tattoos? The Old Testament provides guidance in this regard. Moses, in the first five books of the Bible, establishes about 613 laws. These laws range from the sacrificial system and priestly duties to the lifestyle and governance of the Jewish people. In Leviticus 19.28, God prohibits tattoos as a form of worship of the dead, stating, do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. However, the previous verse also prohibits trimming the edges of the beard, Leviticus 19.27. Moreover, other Jewish laws prohibit eating pork or wearing clothes of mixed materials, Leviticus 11-7 and 19, rules that Christians nowadays generally do not follow. There are many laws that would still be beneficial today, and undoubtedly all Christians should follow the Ten Commandments. However, there are other commandments such as do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk, Exodus 23, 19, which were specific to the circumstances of ancient Israel. Old Testament Context and Laws In the book of Leviticus, God's people had just been freed from oppression in Egypt. As Moses led Israel, God gave them laws to help build an identity based on their relationship with him. Some of these laws intentionally distanced the Israelites from pagan practices. Today, Christians, except for Messianic Jews, do not follow a kosher diet, avoid mixing fabrics, and generally shave their sideburns. So why do we follow some Old Testament laws and not others? There is a great debate about the applicability of certain laws after the New Covenant. Sometimes the New Testament specifically allows certain changes, as when Mark writes, Thus, Jesus declared all foods clean, Mark 7.19. At other times, the Bible says that we are released from the old Jewish laws and no longer need to follow the sacrificial system. However, Jesus continues to condemn adultery, going even further by stating that lust is as sinful as adultery, Matthew 5.27.29. Hermeneutics and Law Interpretation so how do we decide which laws to follow in our lives? What is hermeneutics? As committed Christians, we want to be faithful in our interpretation of the Bible, a process known as hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is the art and science of interpreting and applying the Bible to our current lives. Dr. Ken Gore, a professor of biblical studies at Dallas Baptist University, DBU, explains clearly, the Bible is written for us, not to us. This idea is developed in the book How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth, a valuable work. The biblical authors were inspired to write messages that would endure through the centuries and millennia, but they were not writing directly to us. This leads us to the importance of carefully understanding the context of God's Word before applying it to our lives today. 
For example, we should not interpret Philippians 4.13 as a guarantee that we can achieve anything just by trying. Of course, God has the power to perform miracles and could allow me to beat LeBron James in a one-on-one -on -one basketball game, but that is not the main message of the verse. If I played against him, I would lose. What's going on? Doesn't God give me the strength to do everything I want? Kelly Edmiston provides a helpful introduction to hermeneutics using Philippians 4.13 as an example. Historical and cultural context of tattoos. The biblical context's prohibition of tattoos leads us to reflect on the reasons behind this divine instruction. To fully understand the meaning of this prohibition, it is crucial to consider the historical and cultural context in which it was given. At the time these words were written, the society in which the Israelites lived was immersed in religious and cultural practices that God considered abominable. Many of these practices involved body modification, including tattoos as part of worship rituals for pagan deities and mourning practices for the dead. God, in his wisdom, gave these specific instructions to his people to protect them from being dragged down by the pagan customs and practices surrounding them. He prohibited tattoos as part of a broader call to holiness and separation of the people of Israel from the world around them. This leads us to ask whether these same concerns and cultural contexts equally apply to us in contemporary society. As we reflect on this prohibition in the modern context, we must consider whether tattoos are still associated with religious or cultural practices that contradict biblical principles. Furthermore, we should examine whether the motivation behind our desires to get tattoos reflects a proper reverence for our body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit, according to biblical teachings. Ultimately, this reflection invites us to discern whether tattoos in our contemporary society still represent a deviation from the values and holiness that God calls us to maintain as his followers. Language and interpretation of tattoos in Scripture The word tattoo is not clear in the Hebrew language. Some Bible translations use the word tattoo to translate a Hebrew term that is actually more ambiguous. The Hebrew word kaka can also mean incision or mark. Some scholars interpret this word as mark, which in a completely literal interpretation would prohibit children's temporary tattoos at fairs or even writing notes on the back of the hand. There is a great debate about the applicability of certain laws after the New Covenant. However, most Hebrew scholars agree that kaka refers to the act of piercing the skin to introduce ink, creating permanent marks. At that time, tattoos were much more likely to cause infections and other health risks, but this is probably not the main reason why the Old Testament prohibits tattoos. Why couldn't the Israelites get tattoos? As mentioned earlier, Many of these laws were intended to separate the Israelites from the surrounding pagan cultures and help them unlearn Egyptian customs. For many years, commentators believed that the prohibition of tattoos was related to the proper reverence for God's creation. As pointed out by 19th century Lutheran scholars Karl Friedrich Keil and Franz Delitzsch, Frederick Gardner wrote in 1876 that this passage prohibits profaning human dignity in its human form. Many conservative commentators have said that the law prohibiting tattoos has to do with violating our bodies as God's good creation. Although their position is understandable, we now understand that this law was likely given to protect the Israelites from associating with pagan worship and to help them break free from their bondage. Tattoos in historical practices. Historically, it appears there were two main practices related to tattoos during that period. Some tattoos at that time were related to slavery. Recent studies suggest that tattoos were used to mark slaves in Egypt. As God had just freed the Israelites from slavery, they should never consider themselves slaves to Egypt. Additionally, Jewish rabbis later associated tattoos with idolatry and paganism. James Smith supports the idea that tattoos were linked to pagan worship practices. 
while Robert Jameson and others believe that tattoos were associated with idol worship and were a sign of apostasy. In this reading, it seems that Leviticus does not prohibit all types of tattoos in the modern context, since in our culture, tattoos do not have the same association with idolatry or slavery. Therefore, a good hermeneutical interpretation shows that the underlying principle of this commandment is not violated with modern tattoos. The body as a temple. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, Paul makes a beautiful observation by saying that our bodies are temples. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. In this context, this passage refers to sexual immorality. However, we should reflect on this principle that applies to many areas of our lives. Paul is affirming the importance of our bodies. Thus, I believe this principle also applies to tattoos. An appropriate application could be, we should glorify God with the tattoos we decide to get on our body. Although, again, I'm not sure if Paul was referring to external appearance when he wrote these words. If so, Temples are very decorated, often with elaborate carpets and paintings, so the passage does not seem to prohibit tattoos. Conclusion The Book of Revelation does not forbid Christians to get tattoos, which is part of the reason why tattoos are so popular in today's culture. If you want to get a tattoo, but you're afraid of committing a sin, don't be. At the end of the day, we are all sinners. As long as you're getting a tattoo for the right reasons, expressing your faith in God and living your best Christian life, God will love you. I hope you enjoyed this video and it's now a lot clearer to you what the Bible says about tattoos. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button so these videos can reach more people. Have a blessed day.